Hey, I'm Matt. And I'm David. And today, we're going to do the first of a series of DIY videos for Haggerty to spruce up your classic car. Exactly. So you got a Saturday afternoon open and you say, hey, I'd like to add something cool and freshen up the car a little bit. Some quick projects that you can do with any common tools and uh, common sense, of course. That's right. So today, we're going to do a carpet install on a AMC Javelin. We got a nice carpet kit from ACC provided by Summit. And a Dynamat kit as well for that underlayment, uh, also provided by Summit. Let's get to it. Yeah. Well, it looks like we got a few things in the way of pulling this carpet out. We've got your scuff plates. Uh, looks like just screws holding that down. We've got some seats here, some bolts holding those down, and then you got to pull that shifter. Yeah, and then just the back seat. Simple tools, sockets, and a screwdriver. Looks good. Let's get going. All right. Now, one thing I found when you're working on these scuff plates is with screws, they love to collect dirt. So try to clean them up as much as possible. And I like hand tools just because you're way less likely to strip the, the head of them out. Yeah, really the only uh, the trick on the seats is accessing the, the front bolts and the rear bolts. And it's no more than sliding the, the seat all the way back to get to the front ones and all the way forward to get to the back ones. And then as far as taking them in and out, if you can fold them down flat, um, it minimizes that awkward package pulling them out. Last thing you want to do is drag the seat belt mounts across the paint. We got the carpet ready with the exception of the back seat. The back seats are not tricky. The, the, all you have to take out is the lower uh, cushion and they're actually just literally spring loaded into a clip. So what I'm going to do is at the very bottom of the seat, you can hear them release. Push it in, just slide it out. There are a couple of manufacturers that use a screw or a bolt, but that'll be obvious when you're, when you're looking at it. We have almost exactly a half hour into getting the scuff plates, kick panels, and the front and rear seats out. And you can see the, and the shifter obviously. You can see our minimal tools at this point. Yeah, even though it looks like a lot of stuff, it really went quick. All right, so the only thing else you should be aware of that's going to be hiding underneath the carpet is there's going to be wires in some fashion. You do want to be aware that there's wires under there and not quite such a yank, you know, to get yeah. things out. Do, do take some time. So one of the one of the worst parts about doing this job today is going to be cleaning all this stuff off and getting this surface uh, nice and clean so the Dynamat can adhere to it. So we got some rust starting back here on under this. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll clean it up as best as we can. We'll do some quick dry black paint to try to seal it and then put the dynamite on top of that. And hopefully that'll stop it from going crazy. Someone might ask, why are you welding if you're replacing carpet and you're not fixing the floor plan? Which uh, we're not going to, but at any rate, what we have is one of the seat bolts has been previously broken. And uh, I'm just gonna take the opportunity to get it out of the way and then we can actually use all the uh, fasteners to hold the seat in instead of uh, two out of four. This is my first piece of Dynamat going in here. I'm trying to get an idea of how this will fit down in. This stuff is real nice because it uh, really dampens all the noise, the road noise and that sort of thing. So try to get it covered on the big flat surfaces really help change that that frequency make it a lot quieter now you do want to have a really clean dry surface to put this stuff down on so you really only get kind of one shot at it to get it right Matt and I got the dynamat in and got our wires tagged down I feel pretty good about it, honestly. Yeah. Something we want to note, though, with the Dynamat is because the function is to dampen it, it also does kill some, some heat. But at the same time, you'll notice that we didn't get ridiculously OCD over all the edges and make sure there's 100% coverage. You know, there's some benefit to that, but it's pretty minimal. You know, we're pretty happy with where we're, where we're at. It's not a hack job by any stretch of the imagination. So we got the entire interior done, the floor of it, with really pretty good coverage mm -hmm. and one box of Dynamatic Stream that covers 36 square feet. 
one thing of note for this Dynamat is this is a, a thin piece of aluminum foil on top of it and if you run your hand across it you're likely to cut your hand so be a little bit aware of what you're doing. Here's our pre-molded carpeting. Now the best way to do this would be to lay it outside in the sun for the afternoon so it takes all the kind of wrinkles and crinkles out of it. Unfortunately in uh, February the sun is not out nor is it temperature enough to uh, well really do anything. So we're going to have to probably use a heat gun. So the kits always come with a, with a little extra, there's enough variation. And quite honestly, why should they trim it? You could trim it to fit how you want it. We're going to you know, we'll work from the center out to the edges. Uh, that way you don't find yourself going, oops. First thing we got to do is cut for these bolts, huh? Yeah, let's start with these. Okay, I got my fingers around the head of that bolt. Get her, uh, do the same thing for the seats. All right, so we're, we're putting the seat belts in now because that'll help hold that carpet into place. Now, you don't always have to use spray adhesive. In theory, uh, this will be molded just right to your car and everything will work perfectly, but seeing as we couldn't get it as warm laying it out in the sun, we're gonna give it a little help getting into these real deep areas. I picked up some 3M Super 77 but any spray adhesive really, as long as, as long as it's tacky enough, will work. You do want to be careful, because if it gets on the carpet, it's not coming out anytime soon. And do both sides, do the carpet and do the floor, and that'll get you, that'll get you good and sticky. All right, well let's uh, clean out the front section. We got the back end, it's pretty good. Happy with it. Had our trim piece in there, make sure we weren't gonna cut anything too short on the back. Uh, we will not need this for right now. We'll get the front under it first. Let's get the front down and uh, we'll, we're that much closer. Yes, yeah, so with a heat gun, you do have to be careful. Do not overheat it. Do not singe it. Don't burn your fingers. Get it enough so it moves. And of course, as you have weight in it and stuff, it'll lay a little better. Well, after a fair bit of uh, fitting and trimming and refitting and retrimming and getting everything around the pedals and the kick panel and all that stuff, we're finally putting some uh, some trim back on. It took a little bit of time, but if you take your time, you can really get it up close against all of the all of the under dash obstacles. Well, Dave and got the shifter in, trimmed, screwed back down, and hooked back together. Now I think we can put the seats back in. Looks pretty good. So we have the carpet kit in. It's done. It looked good. Uh, yeah, it, looks... it fits. It fits very well. Obviously, there's a lot of variation between cars in the molding process and all yeah. that sort of thing. Um, but it fits tight. Be proud of having it done. And for for a job that really doesn't require much more than fairly simple tools, simple hand tools, uh, some time and some patience. Yeah, it's about pretty straightforward. Well, about that much patience. Right. So that's uh, that's installing a carpet kit. Let's call it a day. I'm done. All right.